Still reeling from a shocking bridge disaster, this morning Baltimore is launching a massive cleanup operation to reopen one of the eastern seaboard's most vital shipping channels. The Navy is sending the largest floating crane anywhere on the East Coast. And at the same time, the Army Corps of Engineers is deploying 1,100 engineers to assist in clearing all that debris after, of course, this tragic accident that happened early on Tuesday morning. So not only do they have to get as you see there from this live picture, not only do you, do you have to get the bridge parts and huge pieces out of the water, of course, the damaged ship itself, and keep in mind, tragically, they've not even found uh, all of the bodies yet from those we know who perished uh, in this tragedy. Yeah, divers are still searching for the bodies of four of six of those road construction workers who were killed when that bridge fell early Tuesday morning. Our national correspondent, Addie Guajardo, is live in Baltimore for us. And Addie, the governor has laid out a plan for the days, weeks, and realistically, I mean, this is going to take months to really get this recovered. What does that look like? Yeah, look, guys, good morning. And Alexa, I want to paint a picture first before getting to this plan of what this bridge means to this community. If you look behind me, obviously, those pictures of that bridge completely collapsed. This bridge, according to reports, is used by nearly 11.5 million cars annually. That's how many pass through this bridge. That's what this bridge means to this community. And obviously, not a car in sight today. We did see some construction workers out here taking measurements of this highway. We know that, according According to leaders, it's the number one priority to get this bridge rebuilt and get this port reopened. The Biden administration went ahead and approved a $60 million federal funding request from the state to bring to be really begin the treacherous work ahead to help the city recover and rebuild the Francis Scott Key Bridge. To help with that process, Governor Westmore of Maryland says the Army Corps of Engineers moved the largest crane in the east eastern seaboard to Baltimore. Governor Moore described the work ahead as a complex challenge and laid out key priorities now in place. Moore says the first priority is recovery, adding that it's the state's obligation to bring a sense of closure to these families. The second is to, uh, is to clear the channel and open vessel traffic to the port for the health of the local and national economy. Third, he highlighted the importance of taking care of the people affected by this crisis, from families to workers to businesses and first responders. The fourth priority on his list and that he outlined was rebuilding Francis Scott Key Bridge, adding that a long road lies ahead and they're prepared the best minds in the world are here right now in baltimore they are working on this project in a methodical and a rigorous way and we are continuing to work with leaders in the community to provide the support to the families and all of those affected to the people of the state i say we are going to get through this now, throughout the press conference, leaders kept in mind the families and of the six construction workers who lost their lives and are suffering. The governor says an administration liaison has been assigned to work with the families. Maryland State Police suspended diving operations due to security concerns and engineering. Now, four of eight construction workers filling potholes on that very tragic day are still unaccounted for. The governor sending a message saying, quote, Nuestros corazones están con las familias. Lamentamos mucho esta tragedia. It translates to our hearts are with the families and we deeply regret this tragedy. Guys. Addy, this, this cargo ship, we see video of it, and it, it is massive. It's also badly damaged and stuck in the river under debris from the bridge. Uh, there are hazardous materials on board. What steps are being taken to make sure that everyone stays safe? Uh, we're talking about water and the port as well. Yeah, I mean, this is a massive cargo ship. It's been compared to the size of the Eiffel Tower. It has 4,000 containers on this ship. 56 containers, officials say, are carrying some form of hazardous material. The Coast Guard commander says 14 containers did sustain some kind of damage during that bridge collapse, and they included items inside like soap and perfume. He says they've taken precautions to ensure the safety of not just the river, the divers who have been in that water, and this port completely. We've put in place air monitoring on board the vessel to keep track of any potential threats there, and we haven't had any of those threats from the air come up on our air monitoring. And we've got boom around the vessel to also collect anything that comes off of it. 
now there have been reports of something sheen in the water. The Coast Guard commander does say that they believe it's tied to oil associated with the bow thruster when it comes to this massive cargo ship. Now, another thing that I wanted to highlight is the importance of the victims that has been highlighted by leaders here and their support, them vowing that they're going to provide all the support that's necessary for these families. We know that two nonprofit organizations, including CASA, have set up accounts where you can donate to help these families going through this extremely difficult time. Guys. All right, National Correspondent Addie Guajardo reporting in Baltimore for us. Thank you, Addie.